While the world fears climate change, water shortages, and food crises, East Africa has already lived through them. More than 20 nations saw billions of insects devour enough crops to feed 35 million people in just one day. They swarmed over 90 miles a day, weighing nearly 200,000 tons, darkening the sky itself. The world sent millions of dollars in aid, but it was useless. Then came their next move, one that shocked and terrified the entire planet. They decided to raise their own enemies and somehow gained global approval. What on earth were they thinking? How did these terrifying creatures end up changing life in East Africa forever? That's what we'll uncover in today's documentary. As of the moment you're watching this documentary, Africa is home to over one and a half billion people. In just 25 years, that number will jump to two and a half billion. That's four more people every second. But while the population grows, 307 million Africans still face chronic hunger. That's one in five people, or about 1 11 the global average. In Sudan, once called the breadbasket of East Africa, more than 8 million people are on the brink of despair, and 638,000 have nothing to eat each day. Further south, in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia, the situation is just as dire. East Africa used to be ideal for farming. Fertile basalt soil, the deep blue Nile, and the abundant freshwater of Lake Victoria. So what drove this resource-rich continent into desperation? War and conflict have turned fields into wastelands. A quarter of all crops rot because there's no cold storage or reliable roads, and $100 billion a year is spent importing food. Over the last 40 years, rainfall has dropped by more than 15%. Temperatures have risen by almost 3 degrees Fahrenheit, leading to five straight years of drought and millions of acres turning into desert. Then something no one expected happened. Nature decided to test humanity again. At the end of 2019, hot winds from the Arabian desert and extreme rains over the Indian Ocean created the perfect conditions for a tiny creature, the desert locust. Each one is just about two inches long. But when they swarm, they become one of the fastest natural destroyers on Earth. A single swarm can fly over 90 miles in a day, wiping out everything green in its path. Scientists call them nature's perfect plant-eating machines. They don't get tired, they know no borders, and they don't care about seasons. Desert locusts were mentioned in the Bible as Egypt's eighth plague. 3,000 years later, they're back, stronger, faster, and more terrifying than ever. In the cracked, dry sands of Somalia and Ethiopia, millions of locust eggs quietly hatched. Each female lays up to 150 to 200 eggs, and within a few weeks, the sky turns into a storm of wings. Huge swarms move like black clouds, blocking the sun and drowning out all other sounds. According to the United Nations, a locust swarm just 0.4 square miles about half the size of Central Park in New York, can eat enough food for 35,000 people every day. In Somalia, more than 247,000 acres of rice fields, the same as the entire area of New York City, were devoured. Ethiopia lost 50,000 tons of grain, enough to make 100 million loaves of bread. Kenya didn't fare any better. 170,000 acres of lush fields were left bare with only chewed up stalks remaining. The painful part is that the FAO had warned about this nine months earlier, but many East African countries didn't have monitoring radar or crop dusting planes. So when the first swarms arrived, it was already too late to react. Not just farmers, but whole communities began to lose hope for their future food supply. As fields were stripped bare as if burned, the world finally took action. The FAO, Working with the British government, sent a green weapon to the region, Metarhysium acridum, a special fungus that kills locusts without polluting the soil. In theory, it was the perfect biological miracle. A single drop could spread across miles. But in East Africa's harsh reality, science lost to the heat. The fungus needs to be kept below 40 degrees Fahrenheit to survive. But many areas in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Somalia don't even have reliable electricity. One in three storage sites is just a tin shack in the desert. The result? Hundreds of batches of fungus died before they could be used. 
The FAO estimates that if used correctly, the fungus could cut locust numbers by 90% in just 10 days. In reality, billions survived, multiplied, and spread 400 times wider after just one rainy season. People were powerless against these insects. After months of crops being devoured, a desperate idea began to take root. If they couldn't kill the locusts, maybe they could eat them. Sounds crazy, but remember, this is Africa. Everyone's already facing extreme hunger. People here are used to eating caterpillars, crickets, and beetles. Sometimes, anything chewable becomes a lifeline. So, a quiet experiment began. People started collecting, drying, and grinding locusts into protein powder. They used it to make porridge, bake bread, or mix into grain flour. Simple meals that kept whole villages from starving. In Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia, many communities began to call them the green gold of the desert. Scientists, when they looked closer, found something that stunned the world. Locusts have twice as much protein as beef. In three and a half ounces of dried locust, there's 1.6 to 2.6 ounces of protein. Chicken has only about 1.2 ounces and beef about one ounce. According to the FAO, a pound of locusts gives as much protein as two pounds of beef, but needs only one-tenth the water and land to produce. They're also packed with iron, zinc, calcium, and omega-3, nutrients that hundreds of millions in East Africa desperately lack. People began to see the value of locusts and started hunting them more, at least to fill their stomachs. They no longer saw locusts as pests, but as mobile resources. That's how a startup called The Bug Picture was born. They knew their enemy well. Locusts are cold-blooded. When the sun sets and temperatures drop below 68 degrees Fahrenheit, they slow down and become almost motionless. That's when people strike back. At night, in villages like Garissa, Isiolo, or Lodwar, you'll see hundreds of people with sacks, plastic buckets, and flashlights out hunting locusts. In the flickering desert night, hands quickly grab each one, tossing them into sacks that rattle like hail. The bug picture buys each kilogram of locusts for 50 Kenyan shillings, about 35 cents. One person can earn 30 to $50 a night, almost a month's wages for a local farmer. At their Nairobi factory, locusts are washed, sanitized, dried, and ground into pure protein powder. A ton of fresh locusts is worth about $460, but after processing, its value goes up five to seven times. This powder isn't just used as a food supplement, it's also a premium ingredient for animal feed. You see, across East Africa, where over 80% of livestock, from cows and goats to chickens, still graze naturally, the problem isn't just people going hungry, animals are starving too. The land is getting more barren, grass dries up under the sun, and herds of bony cattle walk for miles looking for water. With rainy seasons becoming unpredictable and pastures unable to recover, livestock started dying in huge numbers. In Kenya in 2022, drought killed 2.5 million animals, causing losses of over $800 million. But then locust powder appeared as a kind of miracle feed. Labs in Kenya and Ethiopia started testing it in animal feed. The results were incredible. Cows gave 20% more milk, chickens laid 18% more eggs, and the death rate of baby goats dropped by nearly 30%. An FAO study showed that every ton of insect powder could replace one and a half tons of fish meal, saving millions of dollars in imports each year. Locusts feed people, people feed livestock, and livestock in turn feed the community. It's a closed loop. A few years after the locust pandemic, actually the locust harvest, people realized the insects had nearly disappeared due to being caught by humans. Not extinct, but their numbers dropped sharply. Crops recovered, and fields of wheat, corn, and millet turned green again. But then a new paradox appeared. Farming crops was less profitable than catching locusts. For people in Garissa or Turkana, a night of locust hunting could earn three times as much as a week of farming. So the idea of farming locusts in controlled environments was born, hoping to provide a stable protein source instead of relying on nature. But what seemed smart worried FAO experts. They warned, just one broken glass panel, 
one small gap in the system and millions could escape. Even a small farm could create a new swarm covering 40 square miles, about 24,000 American football fields, in just a few weeks. That would no longer be a natural disaster, but a man-made one. And it's not just a biological risk, there are still cultural barriers. In Ethiopia, Uganda, and South Sudan, eating insects is seen as unclean or even sinful. The Bible says every creature that crawls on the ground is unclean. But the most amazing thing came from the leftovers of the locusts. After tons of locusts were ground into protein, the shells, wings, and dried bodies weren't thrown away. Instead, they were recycled into natural organic fertilizer, rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The three basic elements of life. According to the bug picture, just one ton of locust remains can make nearly 900 pounds of fertilizer, enough to restore about two acres of poor soil. In dry regions like Isiolo, Garissa, and Turkana, farmers tried what they jokingly called insect fertilizer on their cracked fields. Then something incredible happened. After just one season, yields jumped 35%, the soil held twice as much water, and wild grass started to grow again after years of drought. Before, we had to buy chemical fertilizer from Nairobi. Over $100 a bag, said a farmer named Hassan Ali. Now I just use what nature gives for free. No more chemicals, no more waste. Everything goes back to nourishing life, literally. Environmental experts call this the green cycle of Africa, where everything is used. Locusts become powder, become food, then return to the earth. A perfect circle where what was once a symbol of destruction is now the seed of rebirth. From the dry fields of East Africa, this story began to spread around the world. Just a few years later, what was once Africa's crazy experiment became a global trend. The European Union officially allowed locust protein in food in 2021. In the Netherlands and Switzerland, supermarket chains like Coop and Migros started selling insect burgers with up to 40% protein, almost double a regular beef burger. In Japan, Muji launched cricket ramen noodles that sold out in days. Consumers realized insect protein isn't just cheaper, it's 12 times more eco-friendly than red meat. In Singapore, where every square foot of land is precious, the government invested in a plant that processes 100 tons of organic waste a day using black soldier flies. These larvae turn garbage into protein powder for animal feed and organic fertilizer for crops, a closed loop just like Africa's green cycle. Technologies that once existed only in labs are now a $3 billion global industry expected to triple by 2030. Startups in the United States, France, and China are all in on the race, but few know the story began in Africa, where people once starved, feared, and then learned to turn disaster into life. When people talk about the food of the future, they think of technology, artificial intelligence, or smart factories, but maybe that future actually starts with the hands of Kenyan, Ethiopian, and Somali farmers, the first people to see the potential in a tiny locust. Places once destroyed by locust storms are now symbols of nature's rebirth. They learn to turn disaster into hope, enemies into resources, and despair into a future. If humanity can do the same, should we still fear climate change? What do you think? Is this the only way to survive on Earth? Share your thoughts in the comments, and if you believe nature always has an answer, hit subscribe so you don't miss more extraordinary stories like this one.